Moore? Aye. Shaner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. I move we adjourn the closed session. Second. Shaner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Moore? Call Aye. the roll, please. <clears throat> Scott? Here. Waters? Here. Moore? Here. Shaner? Here. Uh, could we stand for a moment of silent prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, please? By the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Go to the consent agenda, which today is items two through nine D. If you want to speak on, yes. Before we do that, may I invite my grandchildren up for a? Oh yeah, we got a quick, quick. I didn't know. I thought they might want to stay and see you in action. Well, well, they <laughs> might. They might. Quinlan, All Carson, right, let's you go. want to come up for a quick picture? Come on, guys. These are my grandchildren that are visiting for the past week, so I'm a little bit tired and worn oh, out, but they're good. Got to get a picture, Alex. Up here, back here. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sorry about this. Want to be in the picture? All right. Let's go get this done. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe shoot five, six, seven. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, no, yeah. you're welcome. This is, there's the mayor. Council member Shane. Council member Waters. Hi, kids. Council member. Where are you guys from? Where are you from? Des Moines. Des Moines. Des Moines. Oh, wow. Good. <laughs> Good answer. Good All answer. All right. Thank you. Taking the picture. Dan. The item, uh, consent is items 2 through 9D today. Consider them to pass unanimously unless, unless a separate roll call vote is asked for by a council member. If you want to speak on an item, please come up as I read it and state your name and address for the record. If you want to speak on an item not on the agenda, please come up under citizen concerns. <laughs> State your name and address, and remember, you'll be limited to three minutes. I'll move the consent agenda. Second. Two is a reading of the City Council minutes of July 26, 2021. Three is a resolution adopting plans and specs for the City Hall LED lighting upgrade. Mayor. Yes. I asked Mike Collette just to share a brief update on that. Sure. Mike Collette, Assistant City Manager. So during uh, the process of CIP, um, Alex had brought up the potential of exterior lighting. So we did get some estimates from the engineer. The rough estimates came in probably not quite as high as the whole interior, but two to $300,000, so pretty significant. So what we would recommend, I guess, is bringing this back in the CIP process and showing you those options to see if you wanna go forward at that time. Yeah, I basically I asked Mike, I appreciate the update, Mike, and the inclusion. Um, I just wanted to make sure at the CIP at least we could look at a couple different options. I think you've seen that in our downtown, whether it's the Commerce Building, SNB, the Warrior. Um, a lot of these projects are starting to include that to really revitalize our downtown and make it more attractive. I think that we worked with Spectra um, to also have that conversation looking at the Tyson Event Center and what could be done, but want to look at it holistically as maybe a package and see if we can get those costs down. So we'll that's what I asked Mike to do to bring back at CIP. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Four is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Ness Fisk for one advanced rider scrubber. Dave, I had a question about this one. Or, yeah, Sparrow or whoever. So we learned to at least figure out what we're going to get for them so we know whether to trade or not, right? What was the question again? Sorry. Spirit, well, well, I said you're going to learn, you learned how to ask for a trade and try to get it bid so we know what's the best option. Yes, we did. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was just trying to follow this and make sure that I had everything right because this is the one we purchased, but it's not working. We purchased it in 19, but it's not working. Is that right? Yes, Travis Bodlock, Fleet Supervisor. Um, 
Nilfex has said that this machine has an internal braking system that for the slope and the grade and the weight is not holding, so it's unsafe. And I wasn't here in 19 when this was purchased, but uh, it's not safe to operate on the grade. Gotcha. But we're not getting any bites on the line or anything? No, we put it on gov deals uh, and zero bids. So you're trading it and getting 12,000? Yes, sir. Yep. Unlike a fire truck last month, but well, that'll be another day. Thanks. Okay. I just want to make sure I had it straight. Yes. So I appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you. Five reactions relating to street closures. A is a resolution temporary closing a portion of 4th Street on September 18th for the Pride Festival. B is a resolution temporarily closing various streets in the Morningside area on September 25th of the Starfest marching band competition and fundraiser. Six are actions relating to agreements and contracts. A is a resolution approving the contract with Steve Harris Construction for the Big Sioux Highway 12 Trail. B is a resolution approving the master services and statement of work agreements between WCICC and the Pro Circular for the annual network risk assessment and testing. C is a resolution approving a contract with Mark Albanicious for the transit maintenance garage parking lot repair project. D is a resolution approving a consulting services agreement with JEO Consulting for the Pierce Street water main replacement project. Res e is a resolution approving a contract with Subserfco for the annual sidewalk ramp project. I need to abstain on that. F is a resolution approving a master services and statement of work agreement with Fiber Utilities Group for the broadband project. Hey, Mike, I had a question about that too, and I didn't know. I didn't, forgot Bob was going to be out, so if you don't know, that's okay, and I can get it from him. But I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about, well, first off, thank you, and I think it's overdue. I'm excited that we're doing this. Um, but I wondered if we knew like the deliverables, the scope, the timeline, any information, especially when we're looking at allocating even funds today with the rescue plan. Um, just want to make sure that we're all going to be in that window or that we have. Yeah, an idea. Bob's really been in the details of this, so I, I would have to get those from him. But you know, the best I I can tell you with this is basically it does line up well with you know the broadband. It'll give us a better idea exactly what the investment should be maybe after this and. It's really the start of looking to analyze the asset we currently have, yeah. see how we can monetize it. Yeah, I just didn't know yeah, what the scope was gonna look like or what their projected timeline was because if their timeline is, look, we need it over a year, you know what I mean, to really analyze this, then we're gonna be behind the eight ball to spend those RFP funds. I can get those answers back for you. And okay. I thought it was like a $75,000 deal, but this is only twenty. I thought sixty. yeah. Okay, and I'm not sure of the prior discussions you've had with Bob. On okay, that. all right, well. If, he just wanted to make sure you were aware that this was proceeding. Okay. It's, it's pretty, it's a fairly broad brush, I know. because in your write-up, you, you said the study will look at options as simple as creating a fiber lease program for existing city-owned fiber, or as complex as creating a municipal broadband utility. That's the, that's the whole spectrum of My guess is it would be, have to be more in depth depending on what they found out in the connectivity on what it was able to provide long term. Okay. Thanks, well, Mike. maybe yeah. it won't turn out to be anything, but at least we'll know finally. So have something. G is IDOTA is a resolution approving a grant agreement for the surface transportation block grant program swap project with IDOT for the Hamilton Boulevard Mill and Overlay Project. Dave, I still don't understand. We talked about, so I don't want to get into this project and and then we say, you know, we'd like to have bike lanes out there from 36th Street North. Well, as far as painting the bike lanes, that yeah, that could be done. I, when you say, I understand that, but if you remember, we ran into this at Riverside Boulevard when we went, went through the DOT. They didn't, remember we had to change. I just, I, I just don't want to come back later and say, guys, I wish we wouldn't have done it this way. Well, and, and I'll defer to Matt, because the, the Salvatore, because on the Parks and Rec, I know they met with the, the, the neighbors okay. out there, the residents, and it wasn't positively received at, about having the bike lanes and changing the lanes. Yeah, you know what? I wasn't for it either, but I drove by and I saw a bike driving down the street. And there's, you only have one lane of traffic. There is plenty of room for a bike lane up in there. Yeah, on the email, I thought you were asking for a separate bike path. That would have no, no, us to no, no. I was asking for a bike lane. I just don't want to build the street and find out we did something wrong. Yeah, we can change the pavement, Mark. Okay, all right. Two is a resolution approving an agreement for a surface transportation block grant. 
program swap project with the IDOT for the Stone Park Boulevard reconstruction project. And we are bidding the sewer line separate, so if nobody hooks up, we're not hooking that sewer line up. Yeah, we're, we're bidding it as a separate schedule. Okay. Seven are actions mm -hmm. authorizing payments. A is a resolution authorizing payment to Knipe River Midwest for the resurfacing project. B is a resolution authorizing payment to Mark Albanicius for the Lemon Court Storm Sewer Manhole project. C is a resolution approving payment to KP construction for the West 18th and Allen Street utility p repair project. Eight are applications for cigarette, tobacco, nicotine, vapor permits. See the list come forward if you have questions. Nine are receipt of minutes. See the list come forward if you have questions. Anyone to be heard on any of those items? Did I read the Starfest one? I don't think. Yes. Yeah. Passes uh, four to zero. Mr. Gretkin's absent. Ten is uh, appointing Alex Johnston Johnson to the Environmental Advisory Board. I'll move that. Second. Passes four zero. Eleven's a hearing resolution approving plans and specs for the Singing Hills Boulevard and Harbor Drive drainage improvements project. I'll move that. Second. Hearing's now open. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 4-0. 12 is a hearing and resolution adopting the proposal of the Siouxland Youth Hockey Association for the lease and the land in the Donner Park Urban Renewal Area and for ice and locker room usage in the IBP Ice Center. I'll move that. Second. Hearing's now open. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Matt, are you here today? One thing I would have you bring back to us sometime, and it's not part, well, it is kind of part of this. It looks like their addition, there was some area where they could have gone longer on that new addition, but they shortened it up because of money, I'm sure. Yeah, Matt Salvatore, Parks and Recreation Director. It's about 291000 for that addition. So well, we're working with them on how we can get that funded. Okay, I was going to say, I think, I think for the we, extra part? or yep, for, what for, the, for the, adi the added lobby. So we're, it seems like it should We're working on some... Yeah, uh, it'll be one big square if we can do the whole thing in okay, well, entirety. Okay, bring that back to us before... Do they do final plans, okay? Yep, we'll do. Okay, thank you. Everybody voted? Passes 4-0, thank you. Uh, 13's a resolution approving an addendum to the service provider agreement with Morningside Plumbing for the wastewater treatment plan. I'll move that. Second. Passes 4-0. 14 is a resolution approving preliminary allocation of funding from the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds. I'll move that. Second. Who's, who's presenting on this? Or is anyone presenting? Hi, Teresa. I didn't have a chance to look at all my emails today, so I, I don't know if you saw the one I sent out. Yeah, I did. Okay. I'm Teresa Fitch, Finance Thank Director. You. Um, I did. I did respond to it, um, and I sent you um, the original allocation. Um, there were um, changes from when um, we initially determined that we had a reduction in allocated funds to the city. Um, so staff met and made um, recommendations to reduce um, some areas where we felt um, that we either didn't need the funds or that we had discussed before that there was a possibility of reduction in funds. And so then I had sent a memo out, I believe that was July, July 12th, to um, let council know what staff had recommended. Um, and then this is, uh, um, is exactly what we sent out on that memo. Oh, so this is, this is your final recommendation? Yep, this was the final memo. Could, could okay. you please just walk through the differences for me? Sure, Because there's just can. a couple, aren't there? Yeah, there's just a few. Um, initially, we were allotted um, $43.1 million. Um, in the first category, which was um, 
uh, are um, us responding to public health and negative um, um, economic impacts. We initially had $3.5 million and staff suggested that we reduce it to $2.5 million. Um, that was a large um, change. And then the broadband, we initially had it at $2 million. And um, prior within our um, study sessions, we discussed that there's a possibility we would reduce that down to a million dollars. So we decided that we thought that council may be comfortable with reducing that to a million dollars. Um, the other changes that occurred um, were in asset renewal and the um, UV treatment. There were ch some changes in cost between the two. Um, initially, we thought that the asset renewal would be $10 million. There was a reduction down to eight million eighty-eight thousand six eighty-seven, And then um, UV treatment was increased from $3.5 million to $5.5 million. So those are the changes that occurred um, in the allocation between the two. Well, in the asset renewal number two and the UV treatment, that's more in line with our what our estimates will be. Right. Is that do I understand that correctly? Yep. Projects. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Teresa. Yep. Do you have any additional questions? I do not. You've answered mine. And this is preliminary. We can always make changes to this as, um, and you'll see all of these projects come to council as they um, go through the bidding process. And as we make changes, we can bring um, updated resolutions to council as well. What do we anticipate being our first project being? Do we can we say yet or? Um, well, we're we um, we're ready to go in asset renewal too right now. So that will be something that will um, be probably, and Tom can speak closer to that. Okay. Thank you, Tom Pingle, Utilities Director, uh, Wastewater and Environmental Services. Um, the first thing we're going to do on the asset renewal phase two is the digester rehab. We're taking two offline abandoned digesters and repairing them, and that will get us extra capacity. And that's relatively soon? Yeah, that's the, the design right now is about 95% completed. So once we get the design completed, we, the engineer, Bartlett and West, once that's completed, they want to get it, the design out on the street for bid in September. So next construction season, it, shall, it should be started. Um, how much capacity will that free up by remodeling oh, or remodeling those two digesters? Great question. Um, we have uh, for the organic loading, which is um, measured by BOD. Uh, we're going to go from 89,000 pounds a day to roughly 105,000 pounds, so it's about a 13% increase. For just the one. Uh, that plus total solids, th that goes from somewhere around like 68,000 pounds with a 13% increase. Those two are for sure. We're working on one other constituent with the ID. Well, that's something. And hold those you know, those numbers because we've been hearing for nine years how this is going to happen. So yep. it's well, the test of your job here today. Yeah. <laughs> here, I'm drawing a blank. What was that we approved, the, the first project? Was that like a last week or two? Didn't we? Uh, did you fund some of those small water lines? We did, have we did a water replacement. I thought it was one of those projects. Um, a water replacement for yeah, Sub Circle got the job, right? For which one? And it was a small job, and I thought it was on that list. I thought maybe not. No, I think I think that the okay. items we've already bid were not on that list. Okay. Here's, we did the design today. And that's on the list. So yep. that was already. But funded. we do have some of these in the plan, and I have to get with Gordon about where our lighting schedule will be. And do you know the 38th Street booster is um, is moving along nicely too, because it was already in the process. Because we initially were SRL funding that, but now with these funds, it's moving forward too. Yep. Okay. So um, and after today, after we um, approve this today, we'll work on some of the plans that would fall within the um, first category. But we were we're not able to um, develop any plans until we had um, further guidance from council that we had approved the plan and we could move forward to develop additional plans for that first um, set of rules and guidance. Thank you, Teresa. Do you have any additional questions? Teresa, the only thing I would say is I appreciate um, your sentiment and your honesty that, you know, if there is at any point in time concern or the council wants to shift directions or think we yeah. need to reallocate or, or anything like that, that we can have that conversation that this is mm -hmm. just more preliminary. I 
spoke with the mayor earlier today and was calling around to a number of um, people around the community just trying to gauge where we are at as far as a community, especially in dealing with nonprofits as well as different businesses that have been impacted by COVID-19. Just trying to make sure to see what need is out there and that we are meeting that need in the best way that we possibly can that would affect all citizens and not just some individuals. And so I think that that needs to continually be an evolution. And I know we'll work with Jill's staff yep. if we open um, that process and what that kind of timeline looks like versus what monies have already been used. So as long as, as long as it's an evolution and we can continue to have that open dialogue and communication, I appreciate it. Yep, absolutely. I know that Jill has a lot of programs, but hopefully this can fulfill a, a void of, of areas that she wasn't able to assist in. And then we can determine um, if we need to, you know, if we can move, shift some of those funds or if that's enough to fill the void. And will yeah. that come out of that first category? What's that? Will that come out of that first category then? Yep. Uh, of yeah, the public for health Jill. And, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, and I think it's really important too, just to remind the public that this isn't just a wish list. This isn't, you know, the projects that we would pick out a thin air. They were pretty pretty prescriptive as far as what we could use these funds for, um, which sometimes is the disconnect. I wish we could use them in a number of different ways, but it's pretty directed as far as what we can use them for. I know that um, Council Member Shaner and I had spoken, we had brought it up in previous meetings too about affordable housing and what there might be for an opportunity for infrastructure to support such projects. So. I I'd hope that we'll continue to at least have that conversation and dialogue and we can see where some of those funds would go. But I appreciate what you and staff have brought forward to us all today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Task Force Zero, Spectra Venue Management and Tyson Event Center Orpheum Theater Update. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. My name is Tim Savona, I'm General Manager with Spectra Venue Management for the Tyson and Orpheum Theater. Just want to use this opportunity here to provide our quarterly update. Uh, this kind of doubles as a uh, year end update. Uh, year ended June 30th, as you know. Uh, quick snapshot at events. Believe it or not, we hosted over 150 events uh, that covered over 100, uh, roughly 80, 185 calendar days across the two venues in uh, FY21, July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. Uh, pretty, pretty wild when we went back and, and added all that up that it was that kind of a number. Uh, we found a lot of growth in some unique areas. Uh, sports tournaments were definitely one. A lot of hockey tournaments, a lot of uh, unique ways to utilize the facility during a, a difficult time. Um, you know, COVID wasn't all bad. We found new things and new opportunities that will, you know, these things will carry forward with us next year uh, into the new year. We'll, we'll pick and choose the ones that went better than others. Uh, we also don't want to oversaturate the market. So, you know, things like Oktoberfest, uh, we're going to keep an eye on, see kind of what happens in the community. Um, if, if things come back like they used to be, you know, we don't want to add another, another one. Um, we kind of stepped in in those areas because there were, there were dark um, spots in the, in the COVID year. Uh, so we'll monitor those items as, as we evolve through the new year. Um, but over, uh, over 25 events we kind of created and, and did on our own uh, over $80,000 in revenues um, with these efforts. A pretty substantial hit to the financials. Um, and as I mentioned, we will carry a bunch of this with us uh, into the new year as, as we go. Can you still see this? Oh, okay, sorry, it went away, now it's back. Uh, so our financials, pretty excited to say that uh, we've hit the budgeted goal. Uh, we're gonna beat it by roughly $25,000 for the Tyson. Uh, pretty, pretty shocking achievement, um, very exciting achievement. Uh, I kind of threw in here some high level viewpoints for you. So our event revenues, um, you know, we fell short of our budgeted goal by about $25,000, um, but you can see there, the goal was 145K. So even in, a, even in a COVID year, we were able to get pretty close to that. Uh, our sponsorship revenues, obviously we had a huge hit there. We lost $631,000 against the, uh, the targeted mark, um, primarily because of all the credits that we issued. Um, but where we made it all up was in the savings. Uh, we had quite a bit of personnel savings um, 
they almost wiped out those sponsorship credits uh, when you figure the, the full-time staff and, and benefits and things like that. So uh, really just you know trying to do our part to make sure we, we look out for the taxpayer dollars. We take it seriously. You can see here for the third straight year, we've reduced the subsidy for the Tyson Event Center. Uh, I put in the last six years of history there to kind of give a, give a comparison. Um, of course, these are pending audit. They were just wrapped up here in the last couple of weeks and audit process will be done. Uh, a, a couple things, um, I mentioned the personnel expenses. There was also some areas that were unique, you know, with like NAIA, there was a handful of things we were unable to do, um, just, you know, because of COVID they were disallowed and um, we experienced some, some financial savings as a result of that. So not all of this is, is to be expected to just be kind of a new normal by any means. There were certainly some areas that were unique and different um, as a result of COVID. Our fourth quarter was huge. You know, we didn't expect a fourth quarter like we had. I think the last quarterly update we were here, we, we were predicting about a $200,000 shortfall. Um, at that time, we didn't have a lot of events in the fourth quarter that, that popped up and that were successful. They went very well. PBR, one of them. Uh, Baby Shark Kids Show, another one of them. Um, so some found success there. And our COVID credit process, uh, you know, we had forecasted how it would go, but when it all came to reality, it, it went a little bit better than we imagined. Uh, last piece here as we look to the future. Sorry, I'm scrolling, it's not moving. There we go. Um, you know, let's let's hopefully get back to, to a, a state of more normalcy. Um, we are in the process of getting back fully staffed. This week and next week, we'll be posting uh, four or five full-time jobs, anticipating those to be uh, filled and started mid to late September. Job pool is a little tight right now, obviously, but that is our intention is to get back to full strength by October 1st, uh, as we get into hockey season and a busy fall season. We do have some events pending. We have a September 11th hockey tournament showcase weekend that we're working on right now. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Huge economic impact on that. Um, Orpheum Theater, of course, is on fire uh, in a good way, sorry. Um, the clubs in the theater business right now is just, it's fast moving, it's very, very busy. Uh, arenas and stadiums are obviously a little bit slower to get back at it. And then of course with everything going on, there is a lot of chatter going on right now. We are incurring a lot of new, um, I guess, rules that we're dealing with. We're dealing with some shows in a few markets right now and just kind of, uh, you know, COVID kind of creeping up on us a little bit. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, we are hopeful. Tyson has, four or five significant events um, pretty close to locked in. We have three locked in right now, another three pending that we feel good about. All of them are gonna uh, raise eyebrows, they're all gonna be things to celebrate. Uh, everything from sports to multicultural events to um, you know, large, uh, large ticketed events and family shows. Uh, so a lot of variety out there just getting ready to, to land and drop. So we look forward to that. Um, Wanna just give one last shout out to our staff uh, it's been a tough year, obviously, for a lot of people, and uh, our staff carried a big load this year. You know, we're we're about 50% of uh, staffing levels, and uh, stayed busy. People kept a great great mind about them, and um, it was a good year. So, any questions or anything on the recap? It's a hopeful report, Tim, and it's it's exciting, especially to hear about some of the the uh, shows and events that you have that you're trying to get scheduled and. And locked in so you still kind of still in that area though of pandemic aren't yeah it was it was open and now it's gray again <laughs> so but it's not black so that's good I, but I appreciate the report yes thank you thank you thanks yeah thanks guys citizen concerns please come to the microphone if you want to talk state your name and address for the record and try to limit your remarks to three minutes My name is Will Meyer. <clears throat> uh, my wife owns a business at 421 Nebraska Street. I work for a nonprofit uh, volunteer with a nonprofit Native Youth Standing Strong out of that same address, 421 Nebraska. We live outside of city and uh, uh, about two, three miles out in the country outside of Sergeant Bluff. Um, <clears throat> what I'm here about is something that took place the other day 
And I, um, I think of all the good things that go on, have gone on with the homeless and all the work and the different times we've, we've turned to you and Chief Mueller and, and different people with our native community, um, but we're not there yet. And it seems like we can do better, and I think a lot of us came wanting to do better and wanting to be part of that process. So we go, they're removing a camp, I'm driving, they're removing a, a camp, basically everybody but one person down there is native, and they're up on the street on West 4th and, uh, or 4th Street and Wesley Way, folding their clothes, getting ready. And basically what happened is uh, the city workers and two police officers come in, says you got 10 minutes to get out, is, is what the uh, police officers had told me. Now, they also said, hey, we posted a sign. Uh, the workers, we posted a sign. And, and, and they removed it, okay? And I go, who? You seen them remove it? No, we didn't see them remove it. Anyway, it was removed. I don't know if anybody has a picture of that sign or whatever. It's kind of insignificant. But the fact of the matter is, these people right there didn't know. They grabbed an armful of stuff. They went up. One of the most pitiful things I've ever seen, somebody standing there in the street folding their clothes. And one guy's yelling, he didn't get all of his stuff. There ain't time for that. It looks like a fire. You're grabbing it, getting out. And would have it helped if the city hired native uh, workers in that area? Or if there was native police officers, I, I don't, maybe uh, a little empathy would go a long ways. These guys are mad. People are frustrated with the homeless situation. I'm not here to address the bigger homeless situation. What can we do in this situation? And people are frustrated. The workers were mad. Everybody's frustrated with it, and it comes out. I don't, I don't think we're going to find a native person, and we ain't going to find a native officer. Can we find people with empathy to be able to go up and do this tough, difficult job of moving in with these camps? Can we notify some of the native people here to help? I tried talking to a couple of the city administrators. I'll tell you what, Ed Pickens is great. Those officers, Keith Burns and the other officer, were, were good. They were doing their best. Another city administrator, so mad he walks out of the office as we're speaking on a speakerphone. Maybe we caught him off guard. I was being pretty good, I think, but that's how mad we are. It seems like there's a culture of people being angry at native and homeless people, okay, and having to go in and remove people. Freaking pitiful. We can't get a little empathy? And so if we could have somebody, if we could be notified, if we could give an hour, okay, you got an hour to get out. If we had, I, I believe there are a couple native people hired by the city. Could they go there? You know, and just say, hey, you got to hurry up. I'm going to need out. you to wrap it up, okay? Okay. Thank you. Pardon me? I'm going to need you to wrap it up. You're three okay, minutes Okay, I will early. wrap it up. Thank you. Thank you. So could we have, could we have that? Um, could we have somebody to come in and help in those situations? But, but this is the main point. This is the main point. Once we kick them out, where do you go? Right? It's illegal to go camp anyplace. We can't stay at the wet, the wet shelters closed or the warming shelters closed in the summer because they can sleep outside. But it's illegal to sleep outside. Where did they all go after the police moved? One half a block away to the next bridge. That's the policy. That's the policy. They go to the next hey, bridge. I am, I'm trying to be nice, but your, no, time, that's okay. your, that's time's, okay. your time's up. Okay? I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, and I appreciate trying to be nice. Thank you. Who else? My name is Trisha. Um, and yeah, Need we are frustrated. Need your ad address, too, oh, if address, you don't mind. <laughs> no, 3290 okay. North Martha Street, Trailer 108, Sioux City, Iowa. Thank you. Um, yeah, we are frustrated. And, you know, um, I know the police are frustrated. I know you guys are frustrated. We're frustrated, but we're all here together. And I think it's time that we, you know, nail down some solutions. Um, you know, I see all these, you guys are throwing around numbers, big numbers, and art restoration projects, um, countless, you know, the Warrior Hotel can have floors shipped in from India and all kinds of things. But what about our homeless? Why can't we help them? That's a serious question. Yeah, and if you're looking for an answer, I, I would say, at least I think, in my time of serving on council, a lot of other things have been done. But we have directed city staff to actually push a lot of different efforts on the homeless front, and they've been making a lot of serious headway. 
um, especially if you look to like the rapid rehousing program and some of the other things. We've even moved, physically moved their office mm -hmm. out of City Hall so that it was more accessible for people to be able to, to help and use those services. I mean, I think that you've seen real effort on, on behalf of the city of trying to invest in those types of projects and coordinate with places that Will mm -hmm. spoke of, um, of just trying to coordinate with them. How can we better serve that population? How can we make sure that they have a meal or a place to stay? Um, I mean, I'm sure we can ask members of city staff if you would like to see, but I'm, I assure you that this council has, has committed hundreds of thousands of dollars to that effort as well. Okay. And my next question is, why is the warming shelter not open during the summer? Is there something that we can fund? Can we fund them so it stays open year long? Uh, because I feel like this is a place where everyone can go. Um, I've, I've met Tessa, uh, she's awesome. Um, I've been in there, it's great. It's not great, I mean, I wouldn't say it's great, but at the same time, it is somewhere that they can go to. The cooling center, one to four, that's not gonna cut it. I don't know about you, but that heat <laughs> for the past you know, week is insane. So I do think that there are possible solutions. I do think that we can come together, and I do think that is the fabric of Sioux City. Chief War Eagle and Bruyere came together as natives and white man, right? That is the fabric of this city. So I'm posing that question to you, to the Sioux City Police. I know they're frustrated, but our response is, it's policy, we have to, we have to abide by it. We have to abide by these laws. So that means you guys, and, that's, and this is us, we're here. This is my family, so we're here. We're explaining to you why we're frustrated. Some of those relatives out there are relatives, and some aren't, but we have that human connection. So what I am really, really going to challenge you is, can we all come together and please, can we, we this can't get, <laughs> continue to be brushed under the rug. We have all this awesome projects around Sioux City, but it's still, the homeless is still gonna be there. And I know this is a big thing, right? It's not gonna go away, but at least we can all come together and try to at least make it a little bit easier. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, City Council. My name is Calvin Harlan. I live at 3290 Martha Street, Trailer 14, here in Sioux City. And I come to you today based on what happened here recently in the past couple of days. And as we talk about things, you know, we, we look at the native homeless, but there's also non-natives in that homeless population. And you all know that. Each and every one of you know that. Now, some of these homeless people are vets, veterans. Some of them are extremely low income. Some of them suffer from mental illness and addictions. We all know that. There's a distinctive history in each and every one of them that have needs, and we all know that. When people come from the reservation, they experience culture shock and come into any community outside of the reservation. We know that. I speak for that. Now, as I stand up here in front of you today, I want to look at two things. I want you guys to consider two things. One is policy. How old are your policies pertaining to homeless? Can they be revamped? Can they be updated and upgraded? Where I work at, we work under policies that are 40 years old, and we're still working, and we're trying to update and upgrade them as a tribe, and I speak very highly for my tribe. The problem here is, I don't know if you guys have done that. If you haven't done that, please do so, because this isn't only our relatives. These are yours, too, from the human aspect. Now. When we look at this, we have a solution. The solution is sitting right here. The solution is sitting within this room right here with my relatives. We didn't come up here just to complain. We came up here to offer, to help you, to help us. All I ask for is that you give us that dignity and that respect to hear us out. That's what I'm asking for right here today from each and every one of you. Not all of us are, are on the street. Some of us come from there. The, those of us that do come from there, we're the ones that have the answers. And I can say that I'm one of those people. Hear us out. Hear my relatives out. Hear what they have to say. I speak to you as an elder today. 
And I give you that respect, and I ask that you, do you take that in consideration and give us that same respect back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My relatives, uh, my name is Jim Hollum. Uh, we with Chasha. Um, come from Santee, Nebraska. I used to live here at one time. And I haven't lived here for a long time, but I still have relatives that live here. Um, I wanted to share something. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, council people here. Um, do you guys know who we are as uh, Native people? We're who we are, where we come from. Do you know our history? Do you know anything about the history of the Dakota, Winnebago, Omaha, Potawatomi, uh, Shoshone people, or whatever nation that lives here? I know, know more about, about Winnebago's than I do the others, but. Well, I want to ask you guys this. Do you guys know about the boarding schools? No, yeah. just what I just recently read. Yeah. Well, a lot of the people that are living in those homeless shelters, I mean, no, they're in that camp, they're struggling with addictions. Now, I'm, I'm personally, I'm an alcoholic. I'm an addict. I'm in recovery. I've been in recovery over 30 years. But it took the relearning, relearning. I'm going to ask you all, before you make decisions about taking people, moving them out, think about that. Think about what they're going through, what they're living with. And I wanted to ask you all, would you be interested in, in, in uh, learning anything like that? Because we could offer that to you. We could offer you a cultural sensitivity workshops. We could, we could uh, teach you our history, the real history, not the history books. What's in the history books, that's whitewashed. Our history, what really happened, the boarding schools. There's unmarked graves out there. Everybody, everybody here is a product of that, all of us. I wanted to share that with you. I wanted to ask you that. Then one more thing I wanted to ask you. Do you, know what Sioux, do you know what Sioux means? It means snakes. It's a, it's a, it's a Nishnabi, French word, Nishnabi and French word. It means snakes. Do we want to be known as a, as a, a city of snakes by kicking people out of, of their, you know, that's, that's all they have. That's all they have. I say, let's make a camp. Minneapolis did it. They have camps up there. They have toilets. You know, just give them some dignity. Give, make them some showers. You know, if we want to bring them back into society, you know, I, I wouldn't want to go put, put him for a job somewhere if I didn't take a shower. And I think that I have are some dig showers, dignity for the people. Remember, right? But that's I just wanted to share that little bit. And you know, if you're interested, I can I can bring that to you about the cultural sensitivity, some workshops, and also uh, our history. I work for the Nebraska Indian Community College. And we can, we can come over here and we can do that. We can offer that to you. Because I think anybody that works with the natives should learn that about what, what the real history is here. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I'm really nervous. Um, You'll be fine. If you'll start with your name and your address. I'm Brandy Baker. Hi. I live 410 Omaha Street here in Sioux City. I'm born and raised. I'm actually half Ho-Chunk on my dad's side and half Navajo on my mom's side. I wanted to um, explain to you about these boarding schools. Now, you guys, I, I hope you guys all have kids. My son is three years old, and from these boarding schools, as young as three years old, kids are being removed, and my children are the most important thing to me. I am a stay-at-home mom because it is important that everything they learn is from me. And I am honestly afraid to stand up here and to speak. I'm 30 years old, and I um, have now taken it upon me to learn about where I come from, learn language, learn everything that makes me indigenous. And because of Jim Hollum working for NICC and the programs that he supports, 
I have learned to make star quilts. I have learned to make beaded regalia. I've learned many things. And that's just from his small grant funding. Now, the little money that he receives has made it a big impact on me and my family. And I've heard about the different programs that the city sponsors, and I'm sure that there can be something else sponsored, like a community center where people can go. Now, I don't know if you've ever talked to these people that are on the street yourself. I'm sure it's very scary, but these indigenous people on the streets, they actually know their language. They really do. They know where they come from. And because they were told no, because they were pushed away, that created sadness, pain, hurt, anger. And one of the biggest things that is a mood stabilizer is alcohol. And when you're hurt every day, that alcohol pushes away that pain and alcohol is readily available in every store and for a dollar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, my name is Jennifer Hallam. I'm from uh, 813 and a half 8th Street, Springfield, South Dakota. So, um, yeah, that was really touching what Brandy just shared. Um, Jennifer, could you pull the microphone sure. down so we can hear you better? Thank you. Okay. So I, um, I was born in this... Uh, the city. Um, my grandmother resides here. I have countless um, family members that reside here in the city. Um, so a lot of times I'm in the city, I'm out of the city. Um, I come here to support um, and I come here to pray. Um, and that means a lot to me to be able to pray um, because we didn't always have it. You know, there are years out of my life where I didn't have prayer. It was gone. Um, so um, <clears throat> So I go to a store, um, I think Sam's, Sam's, something like that, and there's a, a Native American woman, she's not much older than me, maybe mid-30s, and she's begging for change. And, uh, you know, I was, um, I was hurt because I'm that woman. And so I felt like, you know, there's something that this city can do to help. You know, um, if you look at statistics, if you look at, um, um, you know, third world poverty that a lot of the um, homeless people in this city come from. They, a lot of people have been lived outside of the boundaries of a, a sovereign nation, which is a reservation. And, um, you know, to see someone begging for change so that they can get whatever it was that she was getting. But that hurt me, that hurt my spirit because I, you know, I think a lot of our community, but I think a lot of um, people in general, um, so yeah, I've, I've worked outside of um, the state of Iowa, I've worked outside of the state of South Dakota, the state of Nebraska, and I have come to um, understand that within bigger communities, there are um, Native American centers. We have an urban Indian center, and we pray there a lot, we use it a lot, we utilize it for, you know, um, to do ceremonies to pray, we, use, we utilize it to have sales so that our community can make money to help each other, to help ourselves. Um, and I noticed that within the um, Minnesota area, there's a, a, a Native American center and I'm pretty sure that the policies are different because it's a different state. However, that addiction's still there. So if there is extra money in, within this city, you know, I've gone to other places where they utilize the, um, the hotels as um, a means for homeless people so that they can get back on their feet because I, myself, I've been homeless before. My brother's been homeless in this city. And so I thought that, you know, with coming here and, um, you know, kind of begging for help for these people, asking you to, um, you know, take a good look at, at, at what we, we deal with every day, you know, as Native people, 
with uh, intergenerational trauma. I'm going to need you to wrap it up, okay? All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can pull that. You can pull that up. You can pull the mic up. Thank you. Uh, my name's Ronald Thomas, uh, 2812 South Palmetto Street, here in Sioux City. Um, I was aware of uh, what took place a couple days ago, and uh, my understanding that this ain't the first time this happened. Um, it happened when uh, I was a little kid, long time ago, but um, I was. Will asked me to get up here and say something, um, and all day at work I was thinking about what to say, but um, I thought about a long time ago what my uh, what my grandma and my grandpa said to me. Um, I'm gonna ask you guys a question: Do you guys uh, do you guys go to church? Mm -hmm. Okay. So my next question is. Um, you guys believe you guys believe in God, and um, what what would what would uh, God say if um, He sent that person down to pretend to be a homeless person, and the way He got treated, and then He goes back and tells about how He was treated down here. How how would how would God take that. I remember my grandma telling, telling me this. We never look down on anybody that is below us or on top of us. Right now, we're sitting in here as equal person. And my suggestion is, like they said, they threw in, they threw a lot of numbers out here, a lot of numbers. We got a lot of banded buildings around here. Give us the opportunity. Give us one of these buildings. And let us turn this around for you guys. I guarantee if you guys do that for us, that you will get not so much homeless out there. Because the, I talked to a homeless person. I hate to say it like that. I talked to a person a while back, about two months ago, when I was uh, over here uh, at the ATM machine, and he, I come out, and then uh, he asked for some money. And he was talking to me. He wasn't Native. He was, he was just the, uh, I, I don't like to throw the, like, the white person or anything like that, like that out, but he was, he was white. And I asked him, I said, how did you end up this way? And he told me that, he said, when he got back from Vietnam, that he was so messed up in the head, and then people pushed him out. Not only 80% of the homeless here are Native Americans, but also we got to look at the other percentage that are out there too. And we're willing, we're willing to help all those guys. I need to have you wrap it up, okay? Okay. Thank you. So, but I just ask you guys, you know, to, to hear, to hear what we all have to say. Because, you know, we all live here in the city together, and this, uh, this needs to stop. We all need to work together. Okay. You know, that's Thank what you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm Dr. P. Terry Medina, uh, 34, 32 years, 513 Omaha Street, Sioux City, Iowa. The last uh, 30 some years, uh, Winnebago Indian Reservation. Uh, Will said I had three minutes, so I actually wrote a statement so I can be brief. Um, relatives, uh, when I heard of this incident, when I first heard about it, it made me sad, but it also made me mad, very mad. Instead of trying to move our homeless out of, the, out of sight and out of mind, regardless of what color, and cover them up, why don't we reach down and help them up by showing compassion, sensitivity, and treating them with dignity and respect? 
From what I heard, it sounded a lot like bullying and intimidation. This incident is a teachable moment for everyone. The damage has already been done by the actions of a few. The seeds of bitterness, anger, and hatred have risen. Instead of pointing fingers at one another, we should channel our focus on offering solutions to address our homeless population of all colors. Instead of regressing back to building an invisible wall of distrust and indifference, we should look at progressing as one from this day on. The state of Iowa, DHS, Rosecrans Jackson Centers, and now the state of Nebraska probation have opened their doors to our native ways and our native spirituality. Through a program called Father and Mother the Sacred, the homeless population is someone's father, mother, son, daughter, sister, or brother. I am but one of many here today to offer a cultural awareness sensitivity training. My wife and I collaborated and uh, created Dega, which in the uh, Ho-Chunk Winnebago language means uncle. This uh, was created after my late brother-in-law, David Lee Tim Smith, who was a tribal historian, professor, and teacher. Dega stands for decisions, acknowledge, give respect and awareness. Through the collaboration of Sioux City Police Chief Rex Mueller and Woodbury, Co Woodbury County Sheriff Chad Sheehan, Sheehan, and hopefully the City of Sioux City and other civic leaders and organizations, we can come together to create the solutions for this issue here. Down here it says, uh, the Sioux City Native American population is large and we're in dire need of a center that is big enough to offer meals to the homeless, our elders, to hold our traditional wake services, our ceremonies, our funerals. We are moving towards that goal now as we speak. We need to be a more proactive community instead of a reactive, always in reactive mode. Sioux City, uh, my vision would be that we become a culturally sensitive community to one and all. Maybe the city council could do a resolution to, co to combat homelessness. In their saying, we treat everyone with human dignity as citizens of Sioux City, Iowa. And in closing, in the words, in the words of my brother Frank Lemire, nothing changes unless someone is made to feel uncomfortable today. Relatives, this is one of those days, let us pray and offer up forgiveness. Terry Medina, Santee Sioux Nation enrolled probation officer, Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska, fatherhood, mother is sacred. Ahu, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Monopay Lemire, <clears throat> currently in transition, but I've lived most of my life in Sioux City, South Sioux. I'm here today to uh, address uh, address how the city made me feel when I caught word of how my relatives were treated over there. I heard that uh, some of the city workers that, uh, were, were, um, that were charged with helping clean up and sanitize that space uh, were rather rude and disrespectful to our relatives. And PD stood by and watched and, and, and I get it, I get why they're there, I get why, I get why they have to go clean up. And my challenge to the city is there has to be a better way to, there has to be a better way of addressing this, giving our relatives a heads up. If it, we can always play the security or the sanitation card, but there has to be a better way to deal with it. And that's my challenge to each and every one of you. And, and, you know, we sat around last couple of days, we've been having different phone conversations about what does that look like? You know, what, if we have a complaint, what would be the response from city council? And so we understand that things need to be cleaned up, you know, and even if, even if we block that off, they'd move to the next bridge and, and, and some of those problems continue, but, but I would expect uh, a little bit more uh, grace, and and I get it. You know, we got 
workers that may not be trained in, in, in community relations and things like that, well then maybe we need to get them trained. Or we turn to groups that uh, have a little bit more empathy. You know, it's a hot day to go out and pick up underneath a bridge, I don't know what that's like, you know. And then, and then for those, for our relatives, I try to put myself in those relatives' shoes. I used to be homeless in this city. I didn't have to be. I chose that. You know, and some of our relatives choose that too, you know. And we'll, we'll, we'll continue to have that problem. But I put myself back at that time, and, uh, and, and I can see how we tear down notices. Screw the city, we'll tear down the notice and throw it away on the ground. So how do, we, how do we overcome these little obstacles? I think we can figure that out. I think we can figure that out. How do we, how do we notify our relatives down there? You know, and how do we, uh, how do we um, treat what little they do have with a little bit more respect? That's my challenge. Give them a little dignity. And you know, we, before we came up here, we had little talks with different, different folks. And some of us are willing to put ourselves forward to not just solve that simple solution, but even the greater one. But that's my challenge to the council today, is maybe, uh, maybe, maybe the workers that are going there, maybe they need a little bit of training. So thank you for your time. Thank you. That's all thank I thanks. have. Thanks. Thank you. My name is Robert D. Wabashaw. <clears throat> I was born and raised in Sioux City. Now I live in Santee, Nebraska, native town. Well, anyway, growing up, I grew up on the South Bottom. That's where all the natives lived back in that day. And um, you know, when 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 times were good, they were good. My dad used to work at uh, Dress Beef. So we, you know, we lived, at times we lived good, sometimes we lived bad. Sometimes we ate good, sometimes later on in life, we didn't, sometimes we didn't eat at all. Rats were running around our, our apartment. That was after, towards the end of the South Bottom era. And, uh, so anyway, I finally, we grew up. Most of us ended up in prison. Most of my friends are dead or in prison. Beretta says that. Dead or in prison. And that's, it's, and that's the truth among natives and probably every other more minority. What I'm, what I'm trying to get at is, you know, I, I hear it on the news. I hear it in a paper. How, how good Sioux City is. How people come here and they say, oh, we're impressed. What side, they, they don't see the true side of Sioux City. They see that, that, that part that's distanced from us. You know, we don't know nothing about that. We don't know how that, how them good houses look and how, you know, everything. We're used to, we used to live, living among rats. <clears throat> There used to be rats this big in our, in, our, in our apartment upstairs. This is after my dad worked with dress beef and they wanted a strike and they got scabbed out. So anyway, we, he lived, we lived on strike pay. He was old, he's getting old. So it was hard for him to get another job. So anyway, we lived up there with rats this big. And sometimes we ate, sometimes we, we did, we didn't. I can remember one time on a Sunday, I, we had one can of uh, green beans. So I opened it up and I ate it. I was hungry. But I, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, I like to see the true reality of this town. And I like to see the true reality of where they're going. Where, are this, where is this town going? See, I'm, I'm 74 years old. I was born and raised here. Is it gonna be another 74 years? before things change for natives and other minorities. Well, anyway, you know, that we're, we're the minority that's looked down upon and, you know, we're the, we're the worst of the lot, they would say. 
you know, black people, they get jobs, they live in better parts of town, and, and other more minorities are do, doing well. Why haven't we done well? Because they won't let us get in. You know, I remember, I, need to I, you I knew a guy, and uh, he worked at Sioux Tool. Let me say this one thing. Yeah, that's fine. He said that he said he worked at Sioux Tool, and he heard he was there was he was he looked he was white he was native, but he looked uh, he was light complected. He said this uh, foreman said he said well we, we they was talking about hiring natives or hiring minorities. He said well we we tried to keep him out, but we had to hire hire him hire one native. He said but we tried to keep him out, and I think that's the the whole picture of Sioux City. They try to keep us out. We've always been here. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is William Johnson. I'm originally from Mustina, Iowa. I'm a product of the relocation program that happened to our people in the 40s, I believe. I could be wrong with that date. But um, I've lived in two worlds, both the native and the Caucasian world. I've been homeless. I would be homeless right this moment if I didn't have family up here to help me out. And I've seen in these camps love that is unmanageable. I mean, you, you could never imagine the love that's within these camps. They'd be willing to give what little they have for each individual that's sitting right here in this council right now, if you was to need it. Now, all I ask is do the same in return, you know, because I've been there. I love each one of you, that circle back there. You see the four colors that's in that circle. That represents all our relation, which is all the nations upon this earth. You know, we say it every sim, Ceremony, mitakuye, oyasin, which means to all our relation. Because we know that we're all related. You know, the two different worlds that I've lived in, I had to come the last 30 years. 30 years to learn these ways, and it's beautiful. You know, I would not change a thing in my lifetime. You know, I've suffered from alcoholism as well, but I'm in recovery. And, you know, I know that my life is no longer mine. You know, my life is in service for whoever is in need. And there was a time that I was never thinking that way. I was very selfish. But I know these people that's out there in the homeless streets, the selflessness that they'll give of themselves, I ask you, or just to sit back and think about how we are related. My Indian name is Tachante Wamdi Yuha Omane, which means walks with this eagle heart. My brother, Jimmy, he gave me that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. my timer just keep up <laughs> so my name is Tito Parker I reside at 2025 South Cedar uh, Sioux City Iowa Morningside area so I'm just gonna touch on a few things I think uh, everybody that's here just spoke, got up and spoke has said it the best and said it with their experience and with passion and that's why everybody's here um, <clears throat> it does no good to, to point fingers um, at, at people but it does a lot of good to invite people to join fingers. When I worked in different programs, um, I would tell teachers to come out and see where these kids lived that we worked with, because they couldn't understand why they were acting the way they were acting and what was going on in their life. And only until they did that did things begin to change. I don't want you to sit there and listen. I would tell them, I expect you to come with me. Um, the chief has my number. Um, and I tell people, if, if I'm gonna talk about something, I'm gonna have a solution. So I have a couple of ideas and possible solutions. One solution, um, 
partially is me. Um, if there's going to be a camp that's going to be removed and there's a notice put up, invite me to be there to see that notice put up so I can see what that looks like. Otherwise, I have a different picture in my mind. Give me some gloves and I will help clean up. I spent time uh, being homeless myself. Um, as a person whose family has come from Africa, parts of Mexico, this land is native. And people look at me and still can't figure out what I am. But I am who I am. And my blood runs thick to who I am. And I represent a lot of people. On the north side, we moved to the north side, and there was a church. If you don't, across from Leaf Erickson, now it's something else. My friend Leo Miller bought that, and we had about 60 people that were homeless staying there with us. We lived on 29th Street, and we'd take care of them and feed them to get them off the streets. And then when he passed away, we closed that up, and they sold This kid sold it, and it's there no more. We worked in Regency Mobile Home Park, and we bought a couple trailers in there for families that experienced domestic abuse. We paid out of our own pockets. We weren't rich. We did what we could. We collected a lot of pop cans, and we sold a lot of stuff. But we did what we had to do because there was a need. So to the chief and to everybody, I say, call me, and I help clean. I help talk to people. Um, don't get twisted by seeing a suit and tie. I got this, these clothes from rummage sale, and my shoes cost $9. And that's the honest to God truth. But I get my hands dirty just like the next person. I think some things to look at is we look at hiring some people, possibly, maybe for the Human Rights Commission. And under that web, they can go out and do some of this outreach out in the streets. Because um, you got to meet people where they're at, and that's how you do it. And it's got to be someone they can relate to, someone that has their experiences, and someone that looks like them. There's no doubt about that. Um, so I'll, I'll leave with this. Each one teach one. It's not what's right or what's wrong, who's right or who's wrong. It's what's right and what's wrong. Um, we have some great police officers. We have some great citizens. We have people that pull together. We have some great leaders in this community. We have some great young leaders in this community. Um, use them. They have the skills and abilities, and they have the knowledge. We don't need to pay people to come from other, everywhere else to teach us what we need to do. Um, I am the uh, Native American rep with Inclusion Sioux City Committee, um, and I'm honored to be that. When I filled out my application, I put my name on everything, so I had like three boxes checked, and that's where the city put me. But I, and I'm honored for that. But there are plenty of other heads in, this, in this, this place that should be where I'm at. But we need to use the people that we have in the city um, to help with these solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, was that somebody clapping? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody, that's okay. You clapping. Yeah. <clears throat> My name is Josiah Flowers. I live on 2824 Chamber Street in Sioux City, Iowa. Hearing all these people talk, they say the three same words, respect, dignity, and compassion. Those are basic human traits. All we're asking is to be treated as human, not, ab not below you guys, not above you guys, as human people. Long time ago before white people got here, this was Dakota land. Now the Hotankada and uh, Omaha people might disagree, but this was Isanti land. Now, the, so you hear some people talk about the boarding schools. Do any of you guys know the motto of the boarding schools? Kill, it'll kill the Indian, save the man. Long time ago, we weren't allowed to pray, to speak the Dakota. We weren't allowed to speak our language. We weren't allowed to have long hair. We weren't allowed to do our ceremonies. It wouldn't be till 1970s that we were allowed to do them kind of things. We weren't treated as humans just till a little bit ago, till about 40 years ago. And still, we aren't, still aren't treated as human beings. Why? Why not? That's okay. How would you guys feel if you guys had 10 minutes to pick up everything in your guys' house and leave? That's not right, is it? It's just basic human traits that we have as people. I'll leave, leave you guys with this thought. I'm, gonna, I'm not, not going to say anything. I'm just going to say we ask to be treated as human beings just as you guys are because we're all human at the end of the day. We all bleed the same color. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello, uh, Andrew Velasek, 723 Jones. Uh, I feel like I came on the right day because I was going to bring up like Veterans Bridge 
which is where I see a lot of like the homeless set up. Um, so I was seeing if we could like do an artistic project to get that taken care of with the vandalism that's constant ongoing there. And then like the one, two, three areas where people are um, out there begging, if we could turn those into like some, I've seen somebody out there dancing one day and like trying to make tips that way. You know, if we could see something that's positive, we'd like to see something like that or like a Santa, like just like an artist something. I, like I always com complain like if, if somebody was like in their, had their notebook open and was writing in their journal, I would stretch myself to help them out, but I can't just see a sign held up and want to give mo any money for that. And after he hearing all this talk, I, I appreciate it. Um, I hope both sides can look at it honestly. We can't ask the police to always make themselves 100% vulnerable. And, but like 10 minutes asking somebody to leave is ridiculous. I've, I've also been through the homeless situation. I've seen somebody stumbling and I realized that they were stumbling because they were tired and hadn't slept and hadn't had food. And that was a, a huge eye-opening experience. To me, it was like, oh, anybody else like, would have just thought they were drunk. In my past, I would have thought like, this person is scum. And it's like, um, and I've seen like, you know, situations where Yes, there's been homeless people that are willing to give me anything, but what they have to give is alcohol and like, you know, and I, not, and then they're like wondering why I'm there when they don't, when I don't take what they have to offer. So it's like, you know, I don't want to go on and on, but um, also I appreciate being part of the Yamanashi City Council. And uh, I messaged Dan about some area of city that I thought was perfect for that and exciting. And, um, Just, yeah, of course, I want to go on and on because I'd like to hear commentary about that. I just feel like it's a really cool idea to get something taken care of with Veterans Bridge, and that's 100% plausible. Oh, the last thing was I appreciate the work that's being done at um, Mid City Park. Uh, they have been like prompt to that. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Tony C, uh, resident of North Side Street City, um, born and raised here. I know if I want to get up here or not. Um, say uh, I went to Healing here in Sioux City. I'm, I'm half I'm half Native and I'm half White. Um, you know, I in my heart I, I'm 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 full Native. Um, you know, and I and I wonder. I, I say you know, my, I get my White from my grandma, and, and you know, my grandma I I think she's beautiful. Um, they are. Uh, you know, you learn different things on, 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 on history and, and you know, and I'm, and I'm outside, I'm like, why am I down here? You know, those guys down there homeless, like, man, they should be able to do something for themselves, you know, like, get, go get a job, go do something. And well, what I think about when I got up here is, 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 you know, white people are from Europe. This is native land. This is native land. Um... I'm shaking, um, you know what I'm saying? They're Europeans, you guys are, they're Europeans. And everyone up here is white. I can't afford, I can't afford your, your, your suits, you know what I mean? My, my baby's in here. Um, you know, so white people, the government, give native blanket, Y'all give them, y'all give them some smallpox. You know what I'm saying? There's a, there's a huge history a lot of people don't know. Um, racism. You know, and, and to sit here and say, like, it's not going around and say that there isn't someone with Mexican or, or Indian or black or white is, is nonsense. Um, you know, I, uh, I heard all kinds of money being talked about for Singing Hills, for, for downtown, you know, and this is the first time I've been here, so I don't know what you guys talk about monthly, weekly, um, but I guarantee you there ain't nothing being talked about about Westside, and that's where all the skin, that's where all the brown will live, is all, it's all, to, to act like there isn't some with, with the white man and, and, and the privilege that they get, and generations of it, and coin, and currency, and 
and, and your children get it, and your grandchildren get it. You know, my mom, my mom first one graduate from college. Um, you know, and it takes time. It takes time for people to, to make changes for their family. And it probably ain't going to start with the homeless down there. Um, so I don't know. I get up, say something, um, but to act like, uh, you know, that skin isn't a factor, skin color isn't real, um, is nonsense. So that's our. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Tito. Yeah, Tito. Um, I see uh, Jill's here. Um, the economic development, yeah. community development. development. Community. So I see the ads about the um, the Sioux City street outreach. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. um, so I figured, okay, let me look and see how, what, what this can do for me. So I looked it up, and I couldn't get nowhere with it because there's not much information on the website um, on what to do. So I called the number on there, and there was a lady. Her name was Clara. Um, and I wish I just took everything she had in her mouth and shoved it on the website because it was everything I needed to know when she told me that. Because I thought if you call that number, it's going to give you some help. But really, it refers you back to the ICA. And then they find out which programs you best fit. And then they filter you to the street outreach and other programs. So when I through talking with Clara, while I was talking to her, she was making changes, taking notes, and said she was going to talk to some people to make some changes on that website so people can access that in a better way and to understand if you click on that, it's going to take you should go here and kind of what the process is. I think she's going to talk to you about, yeah, which was fantastic. And when she explained it, it gave me um, I looked at a list of agencies that is connected with. So the, the, the ball started with the city and the wheels are already spinning. Um, but there's a lot of folks here that can help with the driving um, with that. And so I challenge the city like I challenge the citizens to look on different websites, look what resources are in the community. Reach out and see what you can do to, to offer, and if they don't want to listen to you, then come back up here and so then they can make them listen to you so we can get the help we need for the people that need it. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. One more thing, City Council. Calvin Harlan, Omaha Tribe, 3290 Martha Street, number 14, Sioux City. What you've heard here today, maybe in summation, is we're willing to help you. We ask you to help us. There's programs out here across this country. I've been to just about every city in this country, and I've seen homelessness. But I've seen cities also doing something about it. You, each and every one of you, have an opportunity here to make something positive happen, not only for the native homeless, for the non-native homeless, whatever that may be. Give us a building. Give us one of your buildings out there. We'll make something happen of it. You know why? Because we're survivors. Everything you've heard here about our history, the boarding schools, I'm a product of boarding school as well. We can make things happen because we're survivors. We have the talent in this room to make these things happen. Give us a building. We'll make it happen for you, for everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank you. I, I won't speak for the council because I never do, quite frankly, but... Uh, I hope you didn't come here today expecting some sort of grandiose promise and then nothing happens because that's not going to, that's not the way I'm going to do business, I can tell you that. Uh, I've taken, I've taken some notes, I'm sure the others have too. Uh, I don't know what the solutions are, but I can promise you we'll do something to work together and I, I guess from my standpoint, I don't, listen, I'm not going to stand up here, I know Tito. Okay, I know Dale Parker, I know people in that, and I used to know Frank, but I don't know the, who your leaders are. I wouldn't pretend to. I'm not going to, I'm not going to even pretend to tell you that I know that, but uh, I can tell you that we would like to somehow get a sheet of paper with names and addresses and emails on it, if it's possible, so that we can contact some of you to begin the process of having some dialogue. That would be my hope um, today. Uh, Listen, nobody, 
Nobody enjoys seeing a homeless person unless you have no compassion whatsoever in your heart. It, and could we have handled it differently? I wasn't there. I don't have any idea what happened. Uh, I think our, I think from reading emails, our staff probably feels like they would like to have a, had a second chance at that. But what's done is done, and what happens going forward, hopefully, will be more positive than what it was. Is is what I would say. So, do you have a legal pad or something that we can start handing out? At least get some names because. Yeah those cards out there and oh, I if you could fill those there. cards out and they before you leave and leave them there so we can gather those that would be much appreciated yeah I'd like to say one thing for native people and all minorities please get the police to stop beating the shit out of us please do that and that's the honest God true because I haven't had me and my friend I seen one of, one of my buddies I grew up with I haven't seen him for years, but he's coming across the street. One time, me and him got for a drunk drive, and they beat the shit. Not drunk drive, but intoxication. And they beat the shit out of us in there. You know why they beat the shit out of us? Because my friend said, they asked him what his name was. And he said Elvis, Elvis Presley. And the whole, the whole, they had a, there had to be 15, 16 cops in there. So what their intentions their intentions were to do that anyway, to beat the hell out of us. So please have, somebody, somebody's got to bring this up. These cops do not like Indians. You know, and I, and I, you know, like I lived out of Sioux City 15 years, but I don't think it's changed when it comes to that matter. Please, please do something about this. Please beat natives up. You know, I never forgot that. I, I, you know, I made one promise in my head. I said, if that ever happens again, something bad's going to happen. So I kept, you know, I, I made sure I didn't, I didn't get in any more trouble. I mean, drinking. Because I knew if I got beat up again, something terrible was going to happen. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Will, um, I agree with the remarks that the mayor has made. And I just want to ask you, because you, you started the conversation here, which is needed, I just wanted to ask you, is there anything that you see after hearing from everyone, and I think everyone really presented good points, was there anything that you see that we might have omitted and for our next step, which is what the mayor outlined, and that is to get together, have the meeting, and, and have some discussion between us? frank, honest discussion. Do you, did you, do you see anything else that, could you come to the podium one more time, please? Uh, I think you guys were very patient, and uh, especially on such an emotional issue. And so, thank you, thank, thank you all uh, from the bottom of my heart. Um, we, uh, you know, we know that there have been people in the past going out into the into the homeless communities and doing that. And we, we need those people. We placed and we um, so Jill's appreciate the native people that are hired are just some of the best in our community, and we need to somehow continue that practice of hiring Native people. I know that's a bigger issue than what you want, were talking about, but um, we need, if there's people out there, there's been people, we need them back, and we need them leading that the other day and, and uh, with, with compassion and, and so forth. So I, think, I appreciate it. Dan, I know you've helped with the sweat lodge and tried to look into helping us get water and you've committed to some of those things and I know that all of you guys care so we appreciate that. We do. I was just going to say that Jill's team did find homes, permanent homes for 88 homeless people last year of all diverse um, culture and we're hoping you know to hit another 88 this oh. year. So there's work being done. There needs to be more. We agree. And that's what I hope, you know, us all getting together and having some open discussions that we can lead to that. Maybe it can be 188. So. I, I think that, I think it's better than ever. 
That doesn't mean we're there. And I think you guys Correct. have done a better job than ever. But there's just more we can do, and that's what we're wanting. And we're here saying, hey, we'll do it. We ain't just coming in, oh, this is the problem. You guys, No, it's better. You guys have really done a good job with are sitting with this issue, but we just we, we want to be part of the solution also. So thank you for all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Sam Hargit Rakita, and I'm the new community inclusion liaison since April to city resident. Um, I just wanted to invite everyone here, um, city council folks and community members, to um, two different meetings. The Inclusive Sioux City Advisory Committee meeting is going to be held on August 10 at 12.15 p.m. in this room. Um, if you're able to come, they're going to be talking about employment statistics and a few other services that are provided through the city. So if you have questions on the history of the city or anything of that sort, you can come in there and uh, ask questions that way. Um, after that, at 1.15 in the same room, we'll be having a pretty honest and frank discussion on policy revisions and things of that nature concerning this matter. Um, I'm going to face you guys. I would like everybody to be there. If you're able to come, if you're able to come today, I'd like you to be able to come that day. Um, as much as I, I foster and I feel that I'm an inclusive, diverse person, I, I don't represent everybody. I don't know everyone's experience. Uh, I've never really said this publicly. I've been homeless before. I was homeless for a semester while in college, so um, I understand the feeling. So I'm very, I hope you can understand that I'm empathetic, at least in that sense. Um, I would love for all of you to come and join us in a really good conversation on policy revision. I really want to move forward in a positive manner, and um, I think we can always do better, right? And that includes us talking to each other openly. Um, my cell phone number is 712-203-7738. Call, text, come visit me. I'm on third floor here in Neighborhood Services. I'm out and about in the community. I'll meet you where you are. I'll come to you. If there's a problem, call me. I'll be the first one on the scene. Let me know, please. That is my job. That's also my passion. And I'd love to be there to help, to bring understanding, to bring information. So if you're able to Get that phone number at 712-203-7738. I'm Semhar Gebrekeden. Um, I'm here to help. Uh, please know that. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Semhar. Semhar. All right. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, and let me just say this, and I don't, I'm, I'm not, you conducted yourselves in a very professional manner today. I know your emotions are running high. That doesn't always happen in this chamber. So I want to thank you for that because it, uh, it speaks volume about what we should be trying to do. So you set the tone today and I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Well, and before you go, because usually when we go to council concerns, everyone shuffles out of here. So I wanted to take a second as well and just thank you all for being here. Along with some of the things the mayor said, I think that uh, Brandy expressed this and others of how difficult it can be to come up to the microphone and share your story or share your concerns and I really respect all of you very much so um, that did that and I was reminded um, that oftentimes it is when we are uncomfortable when change can come about and I remember meeting and working with Frank way early on when when I even thought about running for any office or trying to do anything in the community and he was a great leader and is, is missed but I appreciate all of you being here and being willing to be a part of the conversation I thought about asking Jill to share some of the wonderful things that her and her office are trying to do. Um, but I think she understands, I think her staff understands, I think Tito, Semhar, and this council all understand that we want to do more. Um, we want to be more inclusive and try to meet that need. And so I hope you know that and understand that, that we are open to that and, and thankful for dialogues like this. As the mayor said, it can get rather heated and emotional. And so we thank you all for conducting yourselves in the way that you did. It was very respectful. So thank you. All right, we're going to go to council concerns. Julie. I don't have any today. I think those were our concerns for everybody. And thank you for speaking up, everyone. Alex. Yeah, well, I'll never shy away. <laughs> um, 
one of the things that I just wanted to bring up as a concern, I think we need to have um, a continued dialogue surrounding this, is I am I'm growing more and more concerned about COVID variants in our community um, and what we are going to do as a community to address them as well as a city, as well as um, an organization, a business, all of these things. I think we need to have that conversation. Our numbers are starting to trend about where they were last year in March, and then everything just, everything exponentially got worse because the cases started replicating and it was through community spread. And I fear that with our vaccination rate, last I heard Woodbury County was around 40%. It's really troubling. It's really troubling when you have a variant that's spreading easier than the flu um, and easier than COVID-19 did last year. Um, so I think that we are going to really continue to look to leaders in our community, look for innovative solutions as far as what we can do um, as a large employer, um, as leaders of our community, and otherwise to, especially before school begins, uh, to look to everything that we can do to protect ourselves and protect our neighbors. Um, I, I've sent some emails out to members of the council and others, but I'm going to continue to look for uh, different solutions of what we can do and what advice you could give, because I think last year um, we certainly weren't as proactive as um, now looking back I would have wanted to be, and I feel like now we have a year's worth of lessons, and if we don't act proactively now and try to address and try to do things, um, we're going to be in the same same grave situation, and I, I don't want that for our community. So I would just ask the council to continue to um, consider options, think about what we can do. I know that there is a press conference that I'm excited to be a part of um, that was called by Siouxland District Health uh, that's going to be partnering with the school district as well as others. I'm trying to work with other organizations as well to be there. Um, I believe it's on, yeah, the 11th. Um, so it'll be next week on Wednesday at 10.30. I'll probably bring it up again next week, but I think we need to continue to have that dialogue and encourage our population to get vaccinated and stay safe to take care of ourselves and one another. That's all I have, Mayor. More. Okay. Um, I want to thank everyone, too, for participating in this discussion this evening. And uh, Will Meyer, I just want everyone to know, has been a huge uh, help to me. I think you talked about learning about the natives and uh, Will has helped tremendously with that. So thank you, Will. I just want to publicly thank you for all that you have been doing and that you continue to do. Um, tomorrow evening from 6 to 8 p.m. is our national night out showing support for our neighborhoods. And uh, Mike, I don't know if Bob Padmore left anything with you, but there are nine locations runs from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. In keeping with the past, I'd like to have all the locations covered by the mayor and the council members. And I don't, did everyone respond to their, where, oh, they, where like, they can go? What did I sign up for? I can't remember now. I got, <laughs> I got Leeds and St. Mark. I was going to say, I got well, to let, let out ask, which ones. Riverside Lutheran Church, anybody? Is Pete, also, is Pete, Pete yeah. always did that. Will he be back in town? No, or, I don't think so. I can do that one. So Riverside Lutheran, okay, Julie. I'm sorry, I just want to take time because I want to make sure we have all of these locations covered. I think it's very, very important to do that. Um, Cook Park. I'll I can go. Yeah. You want to take that? I can go anywhere. You I let me know. Go. I, well, I have to go on the what? early end. So, okay. And anything in my neighborhood, I'll start out at Morningside. Well, you go, I'll take Cook Park then because I, okay. I had two in his neighborhood. So I'll take Cook. Okay. Cook. I'll take Leeds. Oh, hang on a minute. So Leeds splash. Okay, Bob. Okay, you're, you're Jones Street, OCD. Dale Street Park, and Rose Hill. What's that? Jones Street, Dale Street Park, and Rose Hill, 15th and Dale. I'm not sure what's all. I need to go back to the list. You what? Well, here, Let's I'll give it to up. you. So Mary Trellia, St. John Lutheran Church, 28th and Jackson, uh, Greenville at Grandma Moose Park. That's a tough one to find. you got to look for that. I think I've gone to that. Yeah, it's up in the hill there. Okay. I was going to say the other worry. I uh, late, figure out where you're going and give me the last one. So. Latham Park. Well, that's what I was going to. That's what okay, I, I got gonna. Cook. So you have Cook and you have Leeds. Well, I was going to do Leeds because it's right in my house. Yeah. Okay. 
Julie, is there another one you wanted to take? Yes, I'm already going to which one? Riverside. Riverside. Going to Riverside, the church right there on the boulevard. Okay, what's near there? So maybe I can kind of pattern it. Uh, nothing over on the river. Nothing. Side, so. Well, no, no. I can do Latham. I'll stop at Latham first. Latham, okay. Alex? What's your other one, Alex? And then I can go to Mary Trailia or anywhere else. Well, okay. you're going to, you, you probably want to go to Grandma Moose's because it's right down in Greenville. I can go to Mary Trailia then. Julie, Mary Trailia. And where are you talking about, Mayor? Because I don't see that one. Greenville. Oh, you're talking about yeah. St. Mark's Lutheran? Yeah. That one on Glen? That's right out on Glen. Yeah, I can do that. You got that one then? Okay, that's fine. I'll take St. John Lutheran Church at 28th. I'll take uh, Green... Did, did somebody take Greenville? Well, Julie? you take it because you know where it's at. Yeah, you I'll take, take that. I'll take Greenville. It doesn't mean you can't go to others. It's just make sure you, yeah, get, yeah, just yeah. Make sure you get those covered. Because everyone likes to visit. They mm -hmm. probably do. And by the time you spend 45 minutes to an hour. You can't get to them all. You can't get to them all. So Jones Street's the only one that's left open right now. Jones? Jones Street, Dale Street Park, I'm sorry, in Rose Hill. Oh, I, uh, 15th and Dale. Yeah, I can do that then. Bob? Okay. Yeah, and if, and if you, but don't, I'm, I'm just going to suggest, I, that's all I can do. I can't. I'm just going to suggest that you you take the time at these locations that you've signed up for, and um, it's six to what? Eight. Six till eight. Well, and so I you're have going to only be there half an hour by the time you pick your travel time, just so you know. Yeah. When I have to drive. And it goes quick. OG, so Those are the participants. I'm a bit of a talker. So I I'm sorry to take mayor. I'm sorry to go through that, but okay. I can't really put us in a bind by not being here. Send him a text. And Pete. Him, I'll give him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pete. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, the last thing, uh, Kaylin's Indoor Comfort celebrating their hundredth. No, Saturday. it canceled. Saturday. It canceled. Saturday. We got an email today I from just the saw chamber. Bruce yesterday. Was, we got an email today from the chamber. And I have a card. <laughs> That's so. And he just was at Rotary and introduced me and said, "This is this is Kaylin's Indoor Comfort. They're they're having." Saturday. Saturday, at, they're having at their family. location. Okay, because Friday is canceled. Oh, was that no, their, Saturday, they had a This is Saturday, river, August 7th. Separate, yeah. Okay. What time, 11 what's the time a, on that? 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at 1715 4th Street, Sioux City, Iowa. Yep. Okay. 100 I years. Friday event was canceled. Yeah, I think that was the change part of it. Art Splash is coming up September 4th and 5th. Just make a note on your calendars for that. And that's at a new location this year. Downtown. It'll be started downtown at the Sioux City Arts Center. Downtown. Great. Okay. Mayor, will we adjourn? That's all I have. Second. Waters? Aye. Moore? Aye. Janer? Aye. Scott? Aye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. So I got Cook. Yes, sir.